We are now on the final level of Google's cross-site scripting, aka XSS game. This level, level 6, is called Follow the White Rabbit. The mission description says, Complex web applications sometimes have the capability to dynamically load JavaScript libraries based on the value of their URL parameters or as part of the location hash. This is very tricky to get right, allowing user input to influence the URL when loading scripts or other potentially dangerous types of data, such as an XML HTTP request, often leads to serious vulnerabilities. The mission objective says we need to find a way to make the application request an external file which will execute an alert. In other words, this application down here, which I have zoomed in on a little bit to make it easier for you all to see, pulls in some type of local file and from the data in that local file is possible to get script execution. At least that's my interpretation of the description and the objective so far. So let's inspect this and let's take a look at what's going on in this frame. So inside of this frame, it looks like we have a div down here that says loaded gadget from slash static slash gadget.js. So this is a good initial starting point because we see this static slash gadget.js is also referenced in the URL bar above. Now, if we look inside the head tag, we see there's a script tag here that has a number of functions. Now, inside of this script tag, there's one that looks particularly important called include gadget with a URL as the parameter. And inside of here, we have a regular expression that's doing a match against the URL input. And it says, set inner text document .get element by ID log. So that's the div that we saw earlier. And then it's going to actually fail if this this regular expression is matched. So they're trying to prevent us from using the HTTP or HTTPS schemes to load anything in this URL bar. Well, fortunately for us, there's a number of other ways to import data from a file, including the data scheme, which is just data colon. After the data scheme, you include a MIME type like text slash plain. You could also do text slash JavaScript. There's a number of MIME types that are accepted for the data scheme that you can look up. And if we pass through a comma, we can actually pass through whatever value we want. In this case, we can just try an alert. So what we're doing here is noting that HTTP is blocked as well as HTTPS. And so we're just trying to pass through file data directly using the data scheme. And it turns out it was very simple to complete this level. All we had to do is find a method of passing through file data in the URL bar. Now remember, when we're talking about file data in JavaScript, it doesn't necessarily mean an external file. What it means is anything that looks akin to an external file. Oftentimes, you can use the blob constructor, or you can use the file constructor, or a number of other methods to construct data which looks close enough to a file object that it will pass validations, and that's what happened in this particular case.